this webinar focuses on the automatic tools of the software. So various types of pictures will be used to create stitch designs. You'll learn about the differences in all the tools for, for auto digitizing. And we're going to work in the creator level of software. Designer Plus and Creator Level have the same tools in the Auto Digitize Toolbox, but Designer Plus has the added programs of Corel Draw SE and Corel Photo Paint. So you can edit artwork and create artwork with these tools. You're looking at the Creator Level of software on the screen. Remember that if you have Creator Level and you want Designer Plus, you can always purchase and upgrade to get the higher level of software. The next scheduled webinar is November 8th, and it's called simply Applique, and we'll focus on the Applique tools. I have had two other webinars this year. One was on the magic of lettering and one was called editing your masterpiece. These can be found on the website. If you go to learn and create recorded webinars and software, you will find these webinars. So we're going to begin with what is auto digitizing. We'll learn about the tools in the auto digitize toolbox. And then I wanna talk a little bit about what else you can do with Designer Plus software. So auto digitizing is creating stitches from pictures. And there are two basic types of pictures that we can work with in the software. One is a bitmap and one is a vector. When you blow up a bitmap, you can see how fuzzy it becomes. And bitmaps have a tendency, whenever you play with the size, you're going to get this fuzziness. Vector artwork is drawn in a computer program. So it has nice clean lines and you can increase the size without decreasing the quality of the picture. In V9, we can process both types of pictures. Vector images, however, are associated with Artwork Canvas. So to process a vector image, you do need Designer Plus. When we look at the Auto Digitize Toolbox, there are two types of tools. First, preparing artwork tools, and then secondly, auto digitizing tools. So we're going to cover both types of these um, basic divisions of uh, tools. Let's start with the tools used to prepare artwork. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the crop tool. And you can crop images in the embroidery canvas. And when you click on crop, there are different shapes that will appear as an added row of tools. And the crop tools let you isolate any part of the picture you want. The rectangle tool is what I use to just select this one apple out of th this picture. You can also select a shape and then drag around the shape and so you could isolate a specific shape and then when you process this into stitches it's only going to add stitches to the cropped area another prep preparation tool is adjust bitmap and this icon takes you to a dialog box where you can apply effects or you can adjust the brightness of the picture or even the color of the picture. You can add sepia tones or grayscale to a picture. There's a, another tool called Touch Up Bitmap that is in the auto digitizing toolbox. And with creator level, this will open the image in the paint. Paint is a Microsoft program that's automatically downloaded when you um, on your computer. So you can access this to do a bit of editing. The prepare bitmap tool will take you to a dialog box where you can reduce colors in an image or sharpen the outlines. You can see all the different colors that are picked up by this picture 
and you can choose to merge colors. You can also find out where the colors are located. Another preparation tool is called color matching. And here you can choose how you want the colors to match to an image. You can add or match the colors of the bitmap to your color palette, or you can choose a brand of thread and then the, uh, the thread brand that you choose will find the closest match and you will have a thread color associated with the picture. You have all sorts of thread charts that are built into the software and you can choose your favorite brand and that will be on the right side of this area. We'll investigate this when we work live in the software. As far as the auto digitizing tools, which would be the remaining remaining tools in the toolbox, you have two types of auto digitizing tools. The either type add stitches usually to all parts of the design or all parts of the picture i should say it picks the colors from the picture and will apply either thread colors or uh, the color from the default color palette it will add uh, either one of these tools will add either a step fill or a satin fill based on the size of the part of the image and the software totally determines the sewing order magic wand has four different types of tools the advantage of using magic wand is you can selectively pick what areas of an image you wish to process you can also pre-select the type of stitch and the thread colors are again going to be matched to the picture or a thread color will be added depending on what you have selected in your prepare bitmap dialog box. You are also going to be determining the sequence of the stitching in the order that you click on the picture. PhotoSnap is a process that applies a one color almost tapestry looking effect to a picture and then color photo stitch is more a scrambled kind of stippling stitch almost. So it's a meandering type of stitch that is applied to the picture. The sequence is determined by the software in Color Photo Stitch. So let's look at instant auto digitize and auto digitize first. One of the handouts that you have is called Auto Digitizing Basics. And in this handout, I'm not gonna go over this, but you have the steps where you, you're going to apply the different types of auto digitizing to the same picture. So you can get an idea of how it's going to add stitches. So you, uh, with instant auto digitize, you click on the picture, there's no preparation, it just automatically adds stitches and then you can edit it. With auto digitize, you're gonna have more control because the first thing it's going to do is open up the bitmap preparation dialog box. And here is where you can merge colors. And um, usually with our artwork that's built into the software, you won't see much difference between the two of these tools. Then we have the magic wand tool and you can pre-select your type of stitch. So it eliminates the step in going back and editing the uh, stitch. You can add both an outline and fill at once. And each tool that you'll find in the magic wand uh, block of tools has a different purpose. One will add satin stitches with multiple angles. Another one will add a single outline kind of in the middle of a, an object. But um, when you're clicking on the picture, you're going to determine the order. If you left click, it's going to add fill stitches. If you right click, it will add an outline. And then this is showing color photo stitch and photo snap. Again, you get a tapestry looking effect with photo snap. It's going to be all one color. With color photo stitch, you're going to have multiple colors.
I just wanted to, uh, before we go to the lesson, I wanted to remind you that there are additional opportunities to learn the software through online classes. You can go to Bernina.com, learn and create, and then um, the Bernina virtual classes. Most of the classes are one day classes and a video recording can be reviewed and there are handouts for the different exercises. So now let's start the lesson. So when you open the software, and you'll switch over to the embroidery canvas. Remember the software opens on a home screen and then you click on embroidery canvas. That way you can do the work in the software. We're going to select, um, before I get started, I want to activate my pointer. I'm going to select insert artwork. Now remember this is insert embroidery, this is insert artwork. Wherever you see a gold daisy, that has to do with the picture. When I click on insert artwork, I navigate to the location of the pictures. The pictures are located in this PC, C drive, users, public, public pictures, Bernina 9 pictures. And if I click on this, you can see that there are four different folders. I will find my pictures in the artwork folder and the folder that we're going to open is the WMF folder. So in the handout called Pictures to Stitches, we're going to select different pictures to use each of the different tools. I'm going to select the decorative daisy for this and I'm going to click on Open. In the auto digitize toolbox, select the um, auto digitize icon and that automatically opens prepare bitmap and you can see the different colors that are used in this particular artwork. We are not going to reduce the colors, I'm going to keep all the colors, but if you wanted to reduce colors you could merge some of these colors. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here I can determine my matching methods. I'm going to click on Add Thread Chart Colors to Palette. And when I click on Select Thread Charts, I see that Isocord 40 is my default chart. If I wanted to add another color, I'll come over here and choose another color. I'm going to choose the Polyfast and I'm going to click on the single arrow, which will put this in the box at the right. In this way, when the software matches the bitmap colors, it can pick either poly, the Wonderfill or Isochord, depending on which thread matches the color of the picture better. I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I don't want the background to stitch, so I'm going to Click on the drop down arrow by fill and choose omit. This is showing me the stitch order. All of these stitches will stitch as fill, and details will be the black areas. I can choose satin fill, I can choose center line, or I can choose satin line. I want a nice even line, so I'm going to choose satin line and then. I'll click OK. The software process, processes the artwork and now it is ready for editing. I'm going to go ahead and activate my color film and know that you can resize the color film so you can see more of the color chips. Color film is a great way to select objects. I'm going to select all the flower petals. So I'm going to click to deselect. And I want to pin my color film so it will stay open. So I'm going to select all the petals while holding down the control key. And to add the default fancy fill, all I have to do is click on the fancy fill icon in the stitch toolbar. 
This file is then ready for saving. If you wish, you can hide the artwork to see what it's going to look like. You could continue to make changes in this, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and do a file save as, and you will navigate to where you want to save those. For the time being, I'm just going to put these on my desktop. I'll create a new folder and I'm going to call this auto digitize. Now, for those of you, we're going to name this, by the way, auto digitizing and click on save. For those of you who have designer plus software, you can do further editing. There are effects that you can add. Uh, and that's the beauty of using designer plus because you have more editing tools. I'll close that down and get a new blank design and we're ready for our next one. So again, I click on insert artwork. This is also a WMF file. And if you, to make it easier to find the file name, you can change the view to a list view. And I'm going to find pinwheel. And I want the pinwheel star. And you can either use the WMF or the PNG. Either one will work. And then click on open. Now with Magic Wand, which is the tool that we're going to use with this, if I click on the Magic Wand tool and click on the picture, I will get the Prepare Bitmap dialog box, but I can also just click on Prepare Bitmap and that will open up this. Here, I am going to reduce some of the colors because I don't want all these color changes. And so we're going to merge some colors here. I'm gonna click on the lavender first, both of those, and I'm gonna click on merge. The software will apply the color that has the largest area. I'm also going to merge the green. I'm going to merge I'm not sure why my, my cursor turned into a hand there, but let's go back and see if it will do better now. Okay, there we go. For some reason that happened, but exiting and coming back helped. I don't wanna merge the blues, but I do want to do the gold, or actually the yellows here. With the control key, you can select the multiples and merge and um, the reds, I'm going to merge those. So that gives me 10 colors and I'm okay with that. I'll click okay. And now we're ready to apply our stitches. So I'm gonna use the magic wand tool with this. And remember with the magic wand, you can ignore certain colors. So I'm not gonna do this yellow, this light yellow ring around here. And I just saw, let me press escape there because I'm going to have to go back and um, I want to merge this gold. That's the problem that, you know, when something like this happens and it's always when you're teaching, you just start all over. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to insert artwork again and find that pinwheel. Hopefully we'll have an easier time of it. I'll click on open and now we'll go through the process again. It always helps to review, right? I'm going to click on prepare bitmap. I'm going to hold down the control key, select my lavender, click on merge. I want to select the um, green. All right, we'll change the colors afterwards because it looks like it's not going to cooperate. So when all else fails, you can merge the colors later. All right, so now we've got the picture processed. I'm going to click on the magic wand and I have to think about the stitch order that I'm going to use because remember the software 
is going to apply the stitch order based on how you click. So I'm going to add my stitches to the gold that's in the background first. I'm going to skip this yellow ring. I don't want stitches added there. Then in, in terms of the pinwheels, it really makes no difference how you add stitches, but I want to think about doing the purples first or a combination of colors anyway, because I want, I want to create as few color changes as possible. Then I'll click on the blue in the background and the blue circle on the top, and I press escape, <coughs> pardon me, to finish. Now, because I, for some reason, I couldn't get this artwork to merge, I'm going to select the colors here, and I'm going to click on a color chip to change the colors so that they are the exact same colors. Normally, this wouldn't need to be done. So I'm going to make sure that all those colors are combined. That way, that will save you from color changes. I can select the pinwheel now and press delete to get rid of it. And now we can change and edit this pinwheel. <clears throat> I can change it um, into pattern run or a pattern fill if I want to. So if I want all my pinwheels to be this same fill, I can select the top pinwheel, hold down the shift key, select the last pinwheel, and then right click on pattern. And there are a lot of patterns in a creator level. To select a new pattern, you just click on select. And for this, I used heirloom pattern 738. I'll select that and click OK, and then OK again, and the pattern fill will update. I want to change my blue circles to a satin fill, so I'll select each one and click on satin fill. In terms of editing, you probably will want to add an outline around all the pattern fills. So I'm going to select the pattern fills again in color film using the shift key. I'll go to the edit toolbox and click on outlines and offsets. I'm going to select that gold color and I'm going to select a single outline and um, then click OK and an outline will be added. And one thing that I forgot to do is uncheck offsets. So when you do that, you can just click undo and it added that blue line because I had this section checked in outlines and offsets. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that and click okay. And now I have the outline to finish off my pinwheel. One other change that we're going to make with this, if I deselect, you'll, you can see that I have all one stitch angle in this center ring, and I want it to have multiple angles. And I can do that through add stitch angles. I just have to set two left clicks across the object. I'm gonna do one at 12 o'clock, one at three o'clock, one at six o'clock, one at nine o'clock. So two sets of left clicks at those different positions. And then I press enter. And you can see how now the uh, center ring goes around with multiple angles. Press escape to get rid of reshape and then do file, save as. And this is called magic wand. on save and then close down that file. I'm going to get a new blank design and I'm going to click on insert artwork. This is also a WMF file and it's called flower pattern. 
I'm going to select the WMF file and I'm going to click on open. Now here we have a, a piece of art that has coloring in the center of the petals and I want just a solid petal. And this is when you go to the auto digitize toolbox and select magic wand fill without holes. So this is going to ignore this different color in the center and just give us a full petal. When I select that tool and click on the pictures, it will automatically open up the prepare bitmap. All I have to do is click OK. And now I'm going to click on the petal on the left, the petal on the right, and the petal on the center. Again, remember the advantage of using Magic Wand is that you can choose what areas of the image to add stitches to. I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to select this and delete, leaving just the three petals. I'll select the three petals in color film, go to the mirror merge toolbox, select the wreath tool, and I'm gonna change the number of repeats to five. I'm gonna bring my cursor onto the screen and you get a preview of what your petals are gonna look like. So I'm gonna click when I've got them all in the center and that generates the stitches. I'm going to select everything with control A and then apply a back stitch to this design. Now, if I press T on the keyboard, you can see that I have lots of jump stitches. We do not have Blackwork Run in creator level software, but we do have branching and branching will help you eliminate all those jump stitches. I'll go to the edit toolbox and click on branching. And if I press enter twice, the jump stitches will go away except for the one that goes from center to the first stitch and then from the last stitch back to the center. Pressing the T on the keyboard again will show you the design. I'll select file save as, and this is called magic wand fill without holes. and I'll click on save. Now, if you have Designer Plus, you have the choice of using Blackwork Run. Blackwork Run is not a tool that's an editor. The advantage of using Blackwork Run is that you have the same start and stop point. You would have to digitize the same start and stop point with branching. I'll close that down and get a new blank design and click on insert artwork. For this, we're going to use a center line tool. So I have to find my center line outline folder. If I click on artwork, that takes me back to this file structure. I can double click to open up the 04 center line. And this is called elephant. Once again, I'm going to do a list because it makes it much easier to find the elephant. And it is actually this elephant that I want to do. So it's the elephant BMP. I'm going to click on open and the artwork then appears on screen. I'm going to increase the size of this and you can use your transform toolbar. I'm going to enter 150 and press enter. And again, I have to go to the auto digitize toolbox and prepare the bitmap. This time you'll see that I only have two colors. I have black and I have white. So I am ready just to go OK. And if um, with Magic Wand center line, it's important to zoom in because you want to click in the middle of the outline around the object. That will add a single line of stitching to all areas that touch. Now, if you hide the bitmap, you can see there are some wrinkles that are not there and the eye is not there. And that's because those elements didn't touch any of the outer outline. So I'm gonna 
have to add those lines separately. And there are, I believe, three different lines that I'm going to have to add for the wrinkles. Now I can actually press escape and select that picture and press delete. Now with the magic wand center line, there will be no jump stitches on all elements that touch because Blackwork Run is automatically added with the center line. However, on these elements that didn't touch anything, you are going to have jump stitches. So just be aware you cannot totally get rid of all the jump stitches because these have to start and stop and then jump to a new area. If you wish, you can select everything and you can change this to a triple stitch if you want the stitches to be more noticeable. Select File, Save As, and this is called Magic Wand Centerline. And click on Save. The next tool that we're going to use is Magic Wand Block Digitizing. So again, I'll refresh the screen by clicking on New Blank Design and click on Insert Artwork. And this is also in the same file and it's called Floral Pattern and it is the number three. And click on Open. Block digitizing gives you multiple angles and they're used for small, narrow shapes. Again, we have to prepare the bitmap. So I'm going to click on prepare bitmap. We have two colors. All I have to do is click OK. And then I'm going to select the magic wand block digitizing tool. And I'm going to click on this one leaf to add stitches. I'll press escape to exit out of that function, I can select my picture and press delete. So we have this one petal. I'm going to go ahead and select that petal and go to the wreath tool in the mirror merge toolbox. And instead of five repeats, I'm going to do a total of 16. And I'm going to bring these in so that the edges touch and when you kind of uh, have this flower go ahead and click and it generates the petals if you have some overlap you may get a dialog box that asks you if you want to merge the objects say no because you want each petal individual and when you merge it will be all one object now if i press t on the keyboard you can see i have tie-ins and i'm going to have some jump stitches so i'm going to apply branching again Control a to select everything go to the edit toolbox and click on branching. I'm going to let the software decide where to begin and end. So I'm just going to press enter twice and the software decides how to create that design without a jump stitch. Now let's digitize a flower center. So I'll go to the digitize toolbox, select the ellipse tool, select whatever color you want, I'm going to zoom in and click on the center and drag to the size of the center that I want. Click again and press enter. If you want, you can change that to a satin stitch or you can leave it as a, a step fill. Now, if I press escape and select that and go to the edit toolbox, you'll notice that remove overlaps is grayed out. And remove overlaps is grayed out because branching was applied. So in this case, remove overlaps is not going to be possible. If I apply branching after I add the flower center, I got travel stitches on top of the flower. So with this small of a flower center, it's going to be fine not to, 
to remove overlaps. I'll select File, Save As, and this is called Magic Wand Block Digitizing. And click on Save. We'll get a new blank design, and we have two more tools to look at. One of them is called PhotoSnap. Click on Insert Artwork again, and I'm going to click on the Artwork folder to navigate back up to the folder structure. And this is also in the WMF folder, and it is called Cabin. I'm going to select the cabin, and I'm going to use the PNG in this case. I'm going to click on Open. And I'll click on the auto digitize toolbox and I'm going to go to adjust bitmap. Here I'm going to increase the brightness of the image by clicking on this and dragging it over three clicks. You can always come back and redo this if you need. And then I'll click OK and click on PhotoSnap. And stitches are automatically added with PhotoSnap. If I want to adjust this, I can do this through Object Properties. And we'll go to the PhotoSnap tab. I'm going to select a fine resolution, which will give me more details. And I'm going to change the fill angle to 90 degrees. So these are all things that you can alter about the processed image. And then I'll click OK. And that's all there is to PhotoSnap. You can redo this by going back and getting the image again, maybe not brightening it so much. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to click on Insert Artwork again and bring that same image back in. And of course, it puts it right on top. So I'm going to select this and move it over. So we can see, let's just process it without adjusting the bitmap. I'll go to PhotoSnap. Again, the stitches are automatically added. I can double click and again, click on Fine and click OK. So by changing the controls a little bit, you can make your image a little bit more intense. A fine resolution is going to give you more stitches, greater stitch count, and usually it will define the image better. Um, changing the brightness, maybe making it darker would be another thing that you could try. So there's a lot of playing around with the controls with PhotoSnap. I'm going to select File, Save As, and I'm going to call that PhotoSnap. I'll close that down and get a new blank design and click on Insert Artwork again. And with this, we'll go to the Artwork folder and go to Photo Stitch, and I'm going to select the mountain scene and click on Open. So with Color Photo Stitch, there's also a lot of playing around with the image that can be done. So I will click on Color Photo Stitch, and this will automatically open up the Color Photo Stitch dialog box. I can choose a high resolution, which is going to give me more stitches. I'm also going to click on Adjust. And here, I'm going to change the brightness to about 1.5. The picture is automatically adjusted when you mess with any of the controls here, which makes it very nice. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here I want to increase the number of colors. So by increasing the number of colors to eight, I can get a, a little bit more detail. You can try different controls here. And uh, when you're done, you click OK and stitches are automatically added to the picture. It's always a good idea to hide the bitmap because the bitmap, of course, fills in some of the spaces. You can add 
digitize details on top of this. You can try some different controls. So there's lots of playing with color photo stitch as well. I'm going to select File Save As, and I'm going to name this Color Photo Stitch. Now I'd like to return to the PowerPoint and talk a little bit about Creator and Designer Plus. When you look at the digitizing tools that are in Designer Plus, they are the exact same things. But remember, Designer Plus offers some additional benefits to creator level. So let's talk about those. There are added tools for conversion because with Artwork Canvas, we can actually take a bitmap, turn it into a vector, and then convert that artwork to embroidery. Remember, when you take a vector image, it, you have the ability to pick and choose what to eliminate. So I could convert that bitmap to a vector and then delete the outlines, for example, as you see in this picture. Once the outlines are deleted and con uh, the item is converted to embroidery, there are ad additional editing tools. This one used a gradient fill. So that gives you a few more tools to work with. Another advantage of Artwork Canvas is that it works with so many more different types of picture files. These are the types of picture files that you can work with in Embroidery Canvas. These are the picture formats that you can work with, and not all of them are picture formats, but um, these are also available in Artwork Canvas. In addition, with Artwork Canvas, we have Corel Photo Paint. So this first image up here, you can see the black line did not generate when I auto digitize this. Taking this image into color, uh, Corel Photo Paint, let me paint a darker line. And then when I processed it with auto digitizing, the black line was picked up. With Designer Plus, you also have the ability to take a, an image and paint over some lines and create actually separation lines. I first want to thank Teresa Pinto for sharing this picture that her grandson drew. And this is drawn by Anthony Pinto Lee. And I've got the red arrow pointing to the white line of separation that I painted in this picture. So what that allowed me to do was separate the drawing so I could use two different stitches in the drawing. Here, when I used auto digitizing, it processed the entire outline as well as the eyes with the same step fill. By painting that line of separation, I can click on these elements separately and I could use the magic wand center line, for example, to create an outline around the picture. And then once that is painted um, and uh, converted to a, a single outline, it can be changed into a back stitch, a triple stitch, a satin, a satin outline if I want. So if you are interested in converting your grandchild's pictures, I just wanted to let you know that there is an upcoming blog article. I don't believe it's posted yet, but it will be on We Also, and it's called Capturing Your Child's Creativity. And in this article, I use the different auto digitizing tools to process children's artwork. Another advantage of using Designer Plus is the capability of doing lots of mixed media. So I can take a picture and I can lighten it, I can apply tints to it, I can get rid of parts of it, such as the people in the, uh, on the beach, I can paint over those people, I can add embroidery elements, I can do some fancy lettering types. And this is a very fun aspect of Designer Plus software and Artwork Canvas and Corel Draw. One other additional thing is 
we have built holes in Designer Plus so that if you process this image and eliminate the white background, these highlights go away. In Designer Plus, we with fill holes, I can select those apples and choose to fill the holes. And then um, that way the images uh, don't have the hole, I don't have to reshape. So there's some added benefits of editing tools with Designer Plus. Now I want to address one more aspect of auto, the auto digitizing tools, and that is with logo creation, because a lot of people want to create logos with auto digitizing tools. And I want to thank Amy Miller for permission to use her logo in this webinar. Auto digitizing can be used for some parts of a logo, but usually not for all parts, particularly lettering, and small items. So you can see that this small uh, swirl item, I had to use manual digitizing tools to manually digitize over that in order to create the essence of this swirl. I did use auto digitizing to digitize the border around the image. It first had to be turned into a single outline, and then I was able to convert it to a satin outline. I used it to create the background for the lettering and this triangle background. So pieces and parts can be used to create a logo. I did use a true type font to use um, the word class or for the word classic. And then I used a small font to create the mortgage corporation lettering. So usually auto digitizing can give you a start for developing your logo, but you'll need to use some manual digitizing tools as well as the lettering tools in the software. So I am ready for questions, Emily. Okay, hi everybody. What a great webinar, Debbie. Our first question comes from Elizabeth. She wants to know what is the difference between the WMF and a PNG file? Okay, they are two different formats. Um, the PNG gives you a transparent background. Um, it is a bitmap. WMF is kind of a, a conglomeration of bitmaps uh, and a vector image. Uh, the, we never had the PNF or P, PNG uh, files in the software until version nine. Okay. WMF files, you cannot see thumbnails with WMF files. So the PNG files were added so you could actually see what the pictures look like. And well, that that's way- That's very helpful. Picture. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'll give anybody else a couple more seconds if they have any other questions. Uh, don't forget, Debbie has some awesome webinars coming up, and then I believe she has some online classes as well. If you're new to software or you wanted to uh, learn more about a specific subject, don't forget to check out Bernina.com under the Learn and Create tab uh, for Debbie's uh, online classes as well. And we have the two handouts today, so make sure you download them. If you don't get a chance to download them, they'll be available uh, on Bernina.com when we post the webinar so you can review with the recording. So no other questions came through, so I will sign us off for today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you at the next software webinar. Thanks, Debbie. Thank you, Emily. Bye, everyone.